Hey guys, Stephen Gilbert here, and welcome to today's episode of the Marketing Hour. I'm joined by my co-host, Bill Hugel. How are you doing today, Bill? Doing fabulous, man. How are you doing? How's everybody else doing? I hope they're good. Yeah, doing good, man. Just dealing with some patty cake motherfuckers. Um, <laughs> this typical I am stuff. You know how it is. Somebody's, somebody's sending like 15K clicks to my launch using someone else's affiliate link, and I think it's because uh, I think it's because I, I, I burned some bridges a couple weeks ago. So dealing with that, um, don't really care because I, I guess they don't realize that most of the top affiliates – you know, it's about relationships, right? So it doesn't ultimately it doesn't matter what the stats say because I can just say, hey, um, <laughs> someone's fucking with us. So don't well, it's it. usually my stats that I'm concerned with. What do you mean? Right, like for conversions, I'm not sitting there going, oh, what's the funnel running like? Like yeah. I, I used to do that. I used to check out the funnels, and I'm like, oh, conversions suck on this. Yet you look at the top affiliates on it, and their conversions are fantastic. So it's like, really, dude. All you're doing is stopping like one or two guys that might bring three or four sales from hitting it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, you know, I had one person reach out to me and say, what happened to your stats? Why'd they tank? Because they were thinking about mailing. And so really all I had to do was show them my top 10 affiliate stats and say, these are what the stats actually are. You know, this is what you can expect. You know, it, it, it's, a, it's a bit of a, it's like a tiny headache, but I feel like these guys think they're like getting one over on us. They're like, ha ha, you know, like in reality, <laughs> it's just like, oh, okay, I'll just, uh, you just giving me another excuse to reach out to affiliates and encourage them to mail is really what, what's happened. I know, right? It, it makes it a nice public, public speech for you. It's like, look at this, this is going down, but check out what everyone else is doing. And then everyone's like, oh shit, if he can do that, I can do that. Yep. Yep. So I guess today, I think we were talking about it before the call, and it's probably going to be a, a bit touchy, but um, what do you think about entrepreneurship and mental illness, and specifically how it affects you know, internet marketers, considering we, we stay at home and are, are alone in front of our computers most of the day? Well, it... That's an interesting one, and it is very touchy. Like, I, I mean, I personally have had the depression issue, especially once I got to Vancouver in the rain and stuff like that. And the more I tend to isolate, the, the worse it tends to get. I won't actually speak necessarily to um, crazy shifts in, in, in demeanor or personality because I, I don't really know about that. But I do know that there's ways for us to combat what happens when we're kicking it ourselves you know what I mean like is I, I think I think a lot of I am depression can creep in because you're alone a lot of people aren't really receptive to what it is you're doing they're not all excited for you so it becomes a very isolated deal even if you're chatting with people all day on Facebook or Skype or something it's very impersonal and I think we all get stuck in this bubble and if you have a failure it's easy on a on a rainy day, or if you've had a couple in a row, to get really, really down on yourself and 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 kind of see things in a in a negative light. So, I mean, there's ways to combat that, but I mean, yeah, is that kind of what we're talking about? Yeah, man, and, and you know, obviously we can't uh, you know speak about um, schizophrenia or some of the more crazy you know. Not, I don't want to say crazy. <laughs> I just mean some of the more complex. Um, diseases that are out there because those I, I don't think those affect entrepreneurs as much as kind of like you said depression anxiety suicidal thoughts I mean there was a study that came out entrepreneurs I want to say are like at least over twice as likely to commit suicide or struggle with depression than than the normal population because of the stress that comes into it and I think with internet marketers we're even in a more unique situation because even if we have employees, we're managing them from in front of a computer. And no matter how many people you talk to on Skype or how many people you talk to via Facebook chat, you're still not getting that one-on-one -on -one contact, which I think is probably pretty essential to maintaining some sort of uh, healthy, you know, outlook. You know, I know myself. I've I've struggled with depression, and and I have to take active steps to avoid getting into that mindset. So I think this is going to be an interesting call. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I I definitely have have that experience as well. Um, I know that when I was running a group um, that I was really into and I was there for five days a week, I know that depression was a lot worse for me because I always, 
I, I was just always there. So I always had a reason to be staring at the screen. And I think one of the biggest things that I was able to do um, personally to combat the way I was feeling was um, I, I kind of stopped that. So that was cool. Um, but more importantly, like I started to develop, like I understand that it, being on the computer and working are two separate things. Right. And I find that if I'm on the computer and working and do my shit and listen to some cool music and then just get it fucking over with and then go back to my life, I find that it's a completely different bill than the bill that's sitting there thinking that every single step I'm taking on the computer is actually something that's moving me forward. Because in actual fact, I think like 98% of what I was doing was just busybody bullshit. Mm -hmm. And that, that can bring you down, man. It starts to feel like a whole bunch of stuff. And, and you feel like your world is, I don't know, however big your screen is by how wide it is, right? Yep, yep. I see that. And it's not. So if you're out for most of the day doing shit, living life and just kind of working and, and put some things in place, it's, it, it becomes a lot easier to handle anyways. Yeah. You know, I think, I think for me, like when I get in a down mood, it's more like episodic, right? It's not, it's never consistent. It's more like I get like a burned out feeling. Like I'm tired of only talking to people through Facebook and I'm tired of having to do this and do that. And I've talked to a lot of uh, internet marketers in particular that that get that burned out feeling, you know, where they don't want to do anything and they don't want to <laughs> they don't want to work, they don't even want to send emails, they just want to lay in bed. And I don't know if that's a combination of like simply being alone a majority of the time or maybe it some has something to do with like the stigma in our industry. Uh, and against our industry, you know, I don't know. I think for a long time for me, I had to come up with a way to, to, to more ethically run my business just so I felt okay. That's not to say that other people don't feel okay, but it's very easy to, to get, you know, because we all know that we could say some shit in our emails and make a lot more money than we typically would otherwise. Um, but for me, that ultimately wore down on my conscience a little bit. I just kind of felt like a piece of shit. And that added into um, the loneliness and the stress and the anxiety, you know. And, and, and the anxiety is like a whole other ballgame to the depression altogether, right? Because our livelihoods are on the line. If, you know, if we don't work and, and we don't make money, we don't live. And, and I, think that, I think that, you know, it's just, it, it creates a stressful uh, melting pot, essentially. Yeah, no, I agree with that um, 100%. I mean... It, it, Personally, with, with the emails and stuff like that and the conscience stuff, I, I did. I, I mean, at the beginning, I, I went through that a lot because it was like, uh, you don't know much, so you're, 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 you're following what's going on and you're just kind of like, yeah, yeah, rah, 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 and all that stuff. So yeah, I, I had that, that myself. I think for me, the biggest thing that, that causes it is that I don't necessarily realize the, what I held on to as a description of success before and what I, I strive to as success now are completely different. When I was working, success was everything to do with the computer. When I had a day job and I came home to the computer, that's when I was working on building success. When I get up in the morning and work on the computer, that's when I was building towards success. So when I come home and I'm here full time, I think that success is hinged 100% on being in front of my screen. Right. And my idea of success right now is not that because I found that that leads to the burnout you're talking about and the, the, the depressive feelings. So I, I've set up a new schedule for myself. And when any of those things are off, I start going into that place, especially in the wintertime. Like in the summertime, as long as I'm laying by the pool, I'm, I'm pretty content most of the time. Yeah. But in the winter, I find if I'm not working out regularly, I'm not feeding my brain with with good information and good knowledge. I'm checking out the bitch fest on Facebook. <laughs> I, I, I like, I, I don't know. My affiliate promo didn't go so well. That launch maybe didn't go as big as I wanted it. Those things just all start to snowball and then it, it becomes crazy and I'm not doing any of the other stuff that, that I'm used to doing, like getting out there and being physically active and it doesn't need to be a lot. But mm -hmm. I find that I go, I go to the gym and then I go to the tanning salon and I have a chat with the lady that works at the tanning salon. So I'm constantly trying to get out and talk with new people, 
coaching the kids, like getting the boys out to do soccer and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Those are things that are really easy to let slide if your entire focus of success and, and meaning in life has been centered around your screen because that's what you needed to do to get away from the other job. Yeah. And, you know, I, for me, I, I'm, I'm kind of the same way. You know, it's gotten a lot easier now that I have a kid because time kind of flies by. But it used to be the days would just drag on, you know, like, and I, I've talked to a lot of people that have the same issue. They'll, their success hinges on the screen and they're like, oh my God, I worked 14 hours today. But in reality, they didn't really work 14 hours because they were getting sidetracked by Facebook or this or that and the other. Um, like for me, like when I, after I, you know, when I first started, I was doing 80 hour weeks easy and I wanted to do that cause I wanted to succeed. But after a while I didn't want to do that anymore and I, and I was still doing 80 hours and I was like, well, there's something's not right. So I started tracking my time and what would happen is I would sit down on the computer. I'd work a little bit, get caught off in a conversation, uh, then go, <laughs> go play a video game, go watch a video, work a little bit more network. And so even though I was telling people I was working 14 hours a day, I was only really getting three to four hours of solid work. And so what I did was I started tracking my time and I flipped it around. So now everything, like if I'm going to work, I'm going to sit down and work really hard for a couple hours and be done as opposed to dreading it and letting it drag on all day. Because then you get stuck in this circular pattern where you're like, I don't want to work, but I have to. And then so you're trying to work, but you're not really working efficiently and, and everything just gets all all screwed up and, and I think that's how I get when I get into like that burnout stage um, and so to avoid that I you know well at first I did drugs because drugs made it a lot easier and then secondly after I stopped doing drugs <laughs> I started doing, <laughs> I started doing hobbies <laughs> like uh, going out and fishing and uh, you know instead of talking to people via chat only I'll make it a point to try to do like chat calls with them like call them up if they need something um, that yep. way you have that kind of face-to-face -face interaction via the video camera. That I found that helps. Um, it's just, it's. I think it's something, obviously not everyone struggles with it, but I think there's just a large percentage of, of internet marketers that do. Um, and, and maybe, I don't know, maybe we can give advice or something. It, it's, it, it's really hard to talk about because obviously we're not professionals, but this is something that affects enough people that it's, it's definitely something you have to watch out for because if you're not... If you're not healthy in all aspects of your life, it doesn't matter really how successful you are if, if you're not happy, you know? Well, yeah, I know. I mean, that's that's 100% the thing. And I, get, and I think as long as you define what – I think it's a redefinition of what success is. And, and I think a lot of what you just said is key in, in like really – for me, self-honesty is a big one, and I find that the more successful people that have the lifestyle I want, that, that lead happy, good financial lives, lead happy, good active lives, they're happy folk. Um, oh, I was going somewhere with that. Um, they all have a definition of success that doesn't really have to do with work, and their actual work hours are very, very small. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like... Like you just mentioned, for me, I talked to someone the other day and they're like, how long do you work every day? Like, how often do you work? And I'm like, well, like about two hours a day maybe. And they're like, I don't believe that. <laughs> I'm like, no, really. I mean, I, because now I know when I'm sitting by the computer and I'm chatting with Facebook, I'm doing all those things that, that you mentioned, I'm aware clearly that that's not work now. That's, it all helps out with what I do. So it's cool to be there and have a presence and I don't really have much else to do today, so I'm going to do it anyways. But the work part is very, very small and so I don't feel, I make my list, I get it done, then I go play with Facebook or I go on to, now I'm getting into Skype a little bit more, I, you, I got all these notifications, I should really pay attention to it. But it's just about breaking it down and then it's going out and enjoying it, you know, is, is lunches whenever. Yesterday we went out for a little bit of a shopping spree. Uh -huh. Gonna leave for for this week coming up, and I know that maybe like shopping sprees or whatever aren't on everybody's agenda, but it's definitely nice to go out and spend the money that you've worked, which is ironic after last week's call. But it's nice to go out and and like spend some of that on yourself and just go out and do wildly stupid things to appreciate everything you've worked so hard for. Yeah, 
Yeah, because if I think if you don't, it, like you kind of said it, you know, you have to redefine your definition of success. And for me, you know, at first I thought money was success, and for a lot of people it is, especially with the current economic state of the, of, of this continent. But um, for me now, I feel like I, I'm in this transition where, to me, success is um, kind of taking care of my family, spending time with my kids, spending time with my wife, having good relationships, and just kind of being a more well-rounded human being as opposed to someone who's, you know, working all the time on the computer. Because, you know, I feel like most people in the industry, they're, they're one of two ways. They're either the four-hour work week type, which is me, because I just want to, I want to enjoy myself and work on myself and and this allows me the time to do that, or they're the they're the eighty hour work week types that are like I want to make a million dollars, you know. And and I obviously it's going to be different for every person, and only you can decide what's right for you. But I think for a lot of people, even the the eighty hour work week types, there comes a time where they're just like, man, this just isn't fulfilling, you know. It's it this isn't everything I thought it would be. Yeah. No, I did. It's. And that that's what it is like we don't I don't know I didn't really understand the process of, of figuring out like planning what my life was going to look like so you get what you get as soon as you're done like work and now you're this full-time entrepreneur you have to make that decision did you work really hard to get to the success so that when you got here you could continue to work really hard directed eight hours a day 14 hours a day crushing it out or did you do this so that you could sit by your, so you could play video games all day, so you could go out and go for walks all day, so you could be a better parent, be more attentive. Um, why, like, that's when it really starts to open up. And I think, yeah, I think the big deal is that it's a lack of vision when you're feeling that way, is it's probably that the vision's too small now and the world seems very closed off. Because if you look at it as like, shit, I got to get up and I got to do 12 hours a day today on my computer What's the difference in lifestyles? Yeah. Like, I signed up for this for the lifestyle, and I know when I'm not living a lifestyle, I do feel very down, very blue. My attitude is shit around the house. Um, I'm not really too positive to people on, on Facebook or in chat. It, it just, it, it's absolutely clearly defining what your life looks like. And I think for some people that are out there struggling with it right now, it's as simple as just going for a daily walk. Yeah. Like, just get out. You'd be surprised. Like, for anyone listening who doesn't suffer from this, you'd be surprised at how many people just get stuck in a funk and don't even go, like, for a walk. I mean, now I drive my kids to school <laughs> if because it, it's w winter and raining. Um, I drive them to school. I pick them up because most of the time it's raining, and I don't want to walk in the rain. But I still got to get out and do those things for myself where I'm, I'm taking in fresh air. So we take the dog out. <laughs> yep. you, need a, you need a new one. So I'm always out there. Um, I, I always have to remind myself to get out there and take that action. I got a friend who's a work from home sales guy. So we take our pugs to the park regularly or I take the pug <laughs> over there to hang out. Um, but it's just all little different things. And, and that's when I really enjoy coming back to the computer and getting to work because I know that work allows me that freedom 98% of the day. Yeah, man. And I think, I think, you know, there's tools people can use, you know, and it's going to be different for everyone. So let's like, let's talk about it. Let's talk about some things you could do. And it's, and what sucks is they're all glaringly obvious and they're all things probably everyone has heard before. But I found like when you're in that funk, it's hard to force yourself to do that stuff. You know, Abraham Lincoln like struggled majorly with depression and suicidal thoughts like hugely and uh, I'm actually reading this book right now um, I think it's called like Lincoln's Melancholy but it talks about how there was like a point in his life in his, in his mid-20s where he was so suicidal that people in the town that he lived in locked him in a room for a week with nothing because he was so just down and like wanted to wanted to kill himself and the point of the book is to like is how he overcame that without the use of medicine and without the use of of therapy and how you can actually use this as a like use depression and your and your suffering as a way to grow and and become a stronger 
human being. And so for me, when I get to that point, I have to, like, and thankfully my wife helps with this. She'll, she will make me do stuff. You know, she'll be like, <laughs> you need to go do this. You need to go hang out with your friends. You need to, you know, go for a walk. You need to go spend some time out because it, it's such a drastic mood shift. And the thing is, when you are down, you're not doing your business any any service because you're you're performing less. You're not if you, if you're not enjoying it or not going into it with the right mindset, you're performing way less than you would if you were in a better mood. And so, you know, just right off the top of my head, some things that I do when I am upset is uh, I'll, I'll 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 exercise, like lift some weights. Um, which I'm not fit at all, but just the act of, of doing it and, and releasing those endorphins. Um, I, I'll go for a walk with my family. Um, I'll hop on a video game or try to hang out with some of my friends, or I'll, I'll read. Um, just anything to, to try to power through that. And see, like the, the biggest thing for me originally was like when I, when I, you know, because for me, I, I grew up really, really poor. And as I was growing up, I thought, well, if I just had money, I would be a much happier person. And that's what I focused on. I dropped out of college, focused on making money, made a lot of money. But what happened was it wasn't the money that was making me unhappy. I was just unhappy in general. And so when I realized I had money, I was like, okay, I'm still not happy, but I still need to make money. How can I do this? Oh, I'm so sad, blah, 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 and then I would drink, and then somebody had drugs, and I would try the drugs, and then now I'm using drugs as a crutch to maintain work, you know, which is just pointless, um, and and the drugs helped a ton, but it, they give you a diminishing return and cause you a lot more problems um, than you than you had originally, and so... Um, now I have to like now I'll go fish or something you know it just ha and it, and it, it's hard it really is because I still I still struggle with it you know it's not something that like I'm obviously not depressed right now but you know maybe in three months I could have a depressive episode and not want to get out of bed because I'm just like fuck everything so it's it's <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's definitely it's it's strange man and and when I talk to people they're like oh you work from home that's incredible. And I'm like, yeah, it sounds incredible, but after five years, you're just like, fuck, I'd rather be in an office. <laughs> I've, I've had that exact same thought where I'm like, you know what? I want to get a job for just two days a week just because. Like, I don't even give a shit. Give my money to charity. Do whatever the fuck you want with it. Just I need to get out, and I need that go in, interact kind of stuff. So, I mean, I don't think you're alone there. But I guess that's also like we've we've refined we've gotten down to a point where our business is fairly automated and stuff like that, and that's why I'm I'm trying to look at branching out and doing a whole bunch of other things that that will possibly get me out of the house and doing stuff a little bit more because I need that. And for myself, that's usually January through March. Those are, excuse me, traditionally the rainiest, coldest, darkest, grayest months in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. And this year, I actually put my shoulder out about three weeks ago, and I haven't been to the gym since. So I am, I'm in PJs all day. I'm like, how many video games can I play? Oh my gosh, look at all the TV I'm watching. This is awesome and shit at the same time. And I, I realized that my attitude, because if I go start to look at chats and stuff like that are different, but one of the things that, that we also have now is we've got planned is we've got our trip that, that we're getting away. But the simple daily things that or simple things that I'll do to get out of it are um, I, I now actually set myself a wake up time just because uh, with the boys I found out that structure and discipline, while we may not always like it, um, help to create a good routine and a, and a, and a happy routine. So I get up early. I, I listen to, uh, I have my alarm set for the Suits theme song because I love that theme song. And it, and it, to me, it just resonates like wealth and success and stuff, even though I'm not going to put it on. It's just everything in that show is like high end and elite level money shit. So I, I like that theme song. So that's how I start my day. Um, then I like to actually listen to, um, Millionaire Mind, something like that. Is that like yeah, a podcast? It, no, it's a, it's a book, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind, Michael oh. Masters, oh, I, T. Harv Eker. Okay. And it's just, if you listen to it at three times the speed on Audible, 
the passion, enthusiasm, and energy that this guy has about making your <laughs> life rad, really like, <laughs> it, it, it makes it really hard to stay in a shit mood. Like, so I find those little things and then I'm like, okay, and the words that are, are, that, that are being said are words that are all triggering me. The book is designed to get you excited, to get you happy, to get you feeling like things are possible. And when you start off the day that way, it, it just tends to move that way. Now, the other thing that I don't think people notice about, but when I talk to people in the interweb space, there are two things that they tend to forget to do. And guys, don't take this the wrong way. If you laugh about this, but secretly don't ever want to tell anyone, it's okay. They forget to eat food in regular intervals. <laughs> and, and they forget to shower in regular intervals. <laughs> I'll talk. I don't know how many people I've talked to. And I was like, oh, dude, what is it? Oh, man, I got a shower today. But those are all like basic habits that you normally start to when you're going out to work and, and stuff like that. And I know they sound simple. And I know they sound crazy, but if you're in a funk, the, oh, my best my best advice to going getting out of like a funk, and and I'm talking about like these are actually depressive funks. Like it's I have been diagnosed with it, so I know what I'm talking about. I don't use the medication to do it, but my number one solution is do that morning ritual, have some breakfast, and if it's been a week or so and I I've been slipping, I will go and get a haircut, I will shave my face, and I will just clean right up. And you'd be surprised at how well you actually, how good you feel every morning. And I just tried to, I created that routine by looking at some of the people that I see as being very successful and I know that they have the wealth. They're always put together. They're always presentable. So when I'm not feeling that way, I, I'm kind of in the mindset that I used to be in when I would get up and go work at the construction site every day, if that makes sense. I mean, I'm sure you shower absolutely every single day and never miss a meal, right, Stephen Gilbert? Oh, no, I, I haven't showered since, like, last week. <laughs> no, no, uh, no, I, I'll go, like, two and a half days without showering. Usually, I judge by my hair. I, I mean, I wash <laughs> my face and hands all the time, but, yeah. like... Uh, I'm probably like if I if I'm at home and not like out on vacation or something, then it's like once every two days, just because I'm not going out. But I think you're right. I I have found like when I am in a very bad mood, and I, I found part of it is because I have I need to clean clean up. You know, I need to go wash my hair, relax a little bit, take care of myself, and I think that is very important. I think I mean, and I'm not the best at it. I'm really not. It's just uh, you know, I I think. I think routine, and, and I learned this a long time ago from Chris Munch, because um, I was talking to him about this. Um, I was like, it, it was actually back when uh, I was going through that whole 14-hour day thing and not getting anything done. And he was like, well, you, you know, people take this type of job, take this type of path because they want freedom and they don't want a schedule. And that's exactly it. I didn't have a schedule. But because I didn't have the schedule, I wasn't... Uh, I was, it was actually hurting myself more because if you would actually just schedule, like wake up, do this, do that, do work, then you're done. And then you actually have so much more free time to, to think and not have you know work in the back of your mind driving you nuts. Um, and it, there comes a point where not having a schedule becomes counter, uh, counterproductive and uh, showering, eating, um, working a set amount of hours. Those are... Those are all things that are going to contribute to your happiness. And I think another thing that's helped me uh, is, is a, even if you just take like a weekend vacation, you know, like I, I was thinking about it because I just got back from vacation and um, coming back to the house, it's like, wow, everything kind of feels fresh and not as redundant anymore. You know, it, it, it kind of freshens up your mind a bit, get, get out and do, do other activities, um, just anything, because I think it's a very bad place to be. And the amount of entrepreneurs that end up, you know, hurting themselves or having suicidal thoughts, I mean, it's a huge, huge number. And it's not something that's talked about a lot or is even addressed a lot in our society. Um, but it, it's a dangerous spot to be. And so, you know, I, I wish I could give more advice. Um, it's just, it, I just, I, I guess like the main thing is people need to realize they're not alone. And I think we also need to realize as a community like an internet marketing community that we have to kind of lean on each other because we, even though we're like business associates, we're also in a way a sort sort of like clandestine coworkers, you know. And so 
I, I, I have a few people that I, I lean on and talk to for advice and stuff and, and who also like share the depressive episodes that I'm talking about. And, uh, you know, if you can make those type of friends or if you need to talk to someone about it and you're struggling, you know, you can talk to me, send me a message. I'll be happy to talk to you about it. You know, the thing is, is these, you know, depressive episodes, I don't think they make us weak. I think ultimately they, they make us stronger because we're dealing with things that most people don't have time to deal with because they're worried about paying rent or, or taking care of the kid or getting the kids dressed. You know, they're so bogged down in everything they have to do, they don't have to, time to take for themselves. But we're in a position where we do, and because of that, we can use that time to kind of grow and become better, stronger people. Yeah, you know, that, that, goes, that goes both ways. I mean, we're always open to talk. And I think part of our community is the fact that we've got this notion where, like, what we share, and it's not even a notion, it's, it's pretty proven. If you want to attract like-minded people, you, you've got to convey a, a very, very similar message. But I think sometimes all the marketing messages make it seem like everybody's world is fucking rainbows and butterflies because we work from home and make money in our underwear. <laughs> And it's not the case. So I, I think you're very right. I mean, feel free to reach out, guys. There's a book, and I there's two. I'll I'll always give give out like references and shit for people to pay attention to because it's helped me. It could help you. Um, Thrive by Ariana Huffington. Yeah, the Huffington Post. Um, it's a really good book about how important it is to unplug every single day and start paying attention to the life that's outside of you. Mm-hmm. And it's a really, really good book for, for this kind of situation or these types of things because it, it starts, I mean, it, it's not clearly about this particular topic, but a lot of the things that she talks about are how, like, what gets piled on and, and how much more, how freer you'll be when you start living your life in a certain way, looking at certain things. And I, it, 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 it did wonders for me. So it's a good book, Thrive. And then there, there's another little thing that I got out that I didn't think would really um, impact my life too, too much. But, and I got to give credit because I got this from Alex Jeffries. It was a tip he gave me way back in the day was like, look, dude, if you're not feeling so great about your surroundings, because at the time, like we, we couldn't really afford to go do lots of stuff. We couldn't really, you know, afford a weekend vacation or a weekend getaway. So what he said was he said, put on your nicest shit, take your laptop and head on to the nicest hotel that you can find. And just work there. Don't go to Starbucks because you're going to see everybody. Just go, go fill yourself with things that, that, and, and um, spaces that will make you feel better about anything, right? And I mean, let's face it. If you go sit next to a dumpster, you're probably not going to feel great. And while money may not make you feel great, the nice surroundings that it can provide you with from time to time do make you feel great. So hotels that are really nice are always a good place to go hang out because you are. You're sitting in a nice leather chair and maybe you don't have a nice leather chair at home. You're, you're, you're dressing for your best and you're seeing other people that are, are walking around, living their life in a, a high-end way. And again, it's not the money. It's just the surroundings that you have. I can give you a picture of my old office like how it used to work, I called that my six-figure office, and it was just a dingy little shithole until my wife, A, got me a chair. I sat on a $49 chair I got from Staples for like three years. Uh-huh. And my wife's like, dude, it's time to get rid of that. As soon as I sat in the new chair, I automatically felt better. Wow, like, yeah. It, 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 just because I feel like a little more posh. And then it was like, okay, I found this desk for you because your office looks like shit. So now we're sitting at, at a new desk, and every day that I come in here, I feel that much better. Yeah, man. Because it's nice to be here. And then the last thing is I finally got a Mac, and when I see that <laughs> fucker sitting on my desk, oh, I'm ready on. to work. <laughs> I hate Macs, man. I'm a PC guy. Oh, I love I'm on thing. a Mac I right just... now because, they're, honestly, they make better laptops than any laptop you can get. But if I had to choose between working on a Mac or working on a PC, I'm going to choose a PC every day of the week. See, I'm not even going to talk to you about that because I don't think we should get in an argument on this conversation, <laughs> on this particular call. I don't think that helps anybody. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, man. I, the, I, surroundings are, are very important. You know, sometimes I'll go and, and, and sit in a coffee shop and just try to get out of the office. Sometimes, especially when I'm on vacation, I'll go find a nice view and just work there. You know, it's, there's so many things you can do. I think the most important thing is just being honest with yourself and being aware of what you're feeling and then taking actions to remedy that, you know. So you have to, you have to do stuff. You know, as much as you don't want to, you have to, and eventually you'll feel better. I mean, it's 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 tough, man, because you can't take the medication route. I tried the medication route for like a month and was like, fuck that. Um, you know, you could take the drug route, but, you know, those these are all just Band-Aids. Ultimately, the only thing that's ever going to fix it is is you, and so it's... It's it's a tough place to be, man, especially because entrepreneurs, you know, they have the stress, they have the anxiety, but on a, on average, they tend to have higher IQs than the general population, and the mere fact of having a higher IQ already makes you more prone to things like depression and, and suicidal thoughts and anxiety, um, because people with higher IQs don't tend to live in a, a delusion delusional filled bubble where the world is rosy you know they're able to see things how you know how they are or how they are more more realistic and it's something that is it's a, it's like a blessing and a curse you know like um because we have the intellectual capacity to do things like this and make money from home that 99 percent of the world would love to do but that also comes with the downside of of the stresses that come with that and the the realizations that you know life isn't all all roses and i think it's i think it's an interesting problem i mean just talking about depression in western society in, in general you know i i think i think we do our kids a disservice because you know we say oh disney this disney that or look how happy and rosy everything is and the good guy always wins and you're all everything's happy and great and there's a purpose for everything when in reality none of that is is ultimately true and so like we raise our kids in this rosy uh uh glass covered environment you know that's not how the world is and i think for a lot of people when they get older and then realize how the world is it's like a it's a huge shock that i think some people don't ever recover from um i don't know i i wish we i wish american society at least would would spend more time on therapy and mental wellness and just in and taking care of yourself because um you can have everything in the world but in, in the end you know if you're not happy from within if you're not able to accept that then it's not going it's not going to you know make your life any better yeah you know i think that's i think that's um a very much the, the people decide but the way that i've noticed at least in western society that things work is it has to be a predominant, like it has to have about five to 10 years of a period where it develops into something. Because I remember the raw organic stuff about five, 10 years ago and how important food was. And I remember it just making that breakthrough. You know what I mean? Where it was kind of part of, like it was becoming part of the consciousness of society. And now people are actually realizing like, holy shit, I can feel better if I eat better. And, and as a result of that, they're starting to move in, into the, the, the happier, healthier you. I don't think it's as mainstream as it should be, but I definitely think it's getting there. And I know personally in Canada, I've seen that we're starting to make some pushes towards um, at least some awareness about this kind of stuff because it is a common, like, this is a common, common thing. And I know that there's a lot of people that don't even know that they, they suffer from depression or anything like that. They just kind of expect this is what life is. And it's simple things like, like changing diet and getting that, that, um, that movement forward. But what I think is more important is not letting the messages be given to us by other people and making those decisions for ourselves. I mean, I'll watch all the conspiracy stuff. I'll watch all the, the, the health food, like just go on a juice diet, just go veggie, don't eat meat. I'll watch all that stuff and, and I'll try and I'll figure it out. And I'll tell you, man, the better, more well-rounded my diet is, the less caffeine, the less sugar, the less shit I'm taking in, the happier I feel. And I think that that's where the personal accountability starts coming in is if you don't feel like something is right, 
start looking into it, start learning and take the action. And I think it's important that you said that earlier was like, you got to identify and you got to be self honest, but more importantly, you've got to make this a priority because the only person at the end of the day, because I mean, unless you're extremely over the top and you need some medication, I know lots of people that should have been on medication, myself included. I went through the little stint and it wasn't the medication that helped me out of it. In fact, I went through the drug stint too. Um, it's being aware, being present and going, okay, I'm going to make the change. And when you can decide that for yourself, I think that's, a, that's how society is going to get better and be more aware of it. Because if you're only making a little blip, mainstream media isn't going to change shit for you so that you can feel happier and healthier. Because in my opinion, society is set up in a very, very good way right now to make rich richer and keep poor poor. The only people that bridge or jump that gap are the people that are poor and are like, holy shit, I need to learn how those rich people are doing it. And interestingly enough, now we got enough rich people that are out there telling poor people how to do it. So I think it's, I think it's, I think it's a lot of us taking action. And I, and I think the offer that we made to talk to anyone here that like, if you got, if you want to chat, just send the message to either Steven or myself and we'll, we'll do the best we can. I mean, I, I can't talk you off the ledge, guys. I'm not going to say that. Like, I'm, I'm not good at that. You should probably call the helpline. But if you're feeling down and, and looking for some help, by all means, I mean, take that action. Reach out. Yeah, you're, you're definitely not alone. I mean, I, just off the top of my head, I probably know a dozen or so marketers that, that struggle with this. And it's those are just people that are willing to talk about it in private once you've grown close enough to them, you know. And, and it's not something you should go through alone. You know, even if you even if you have to go get a therapist, go do it. And as much as I hated therapy for a long time, I actually just started going again, and uh, it helps. You know, just even if you you know, obviously, I I have some major issues from my childhood that I've worked through and things like that. But just the fact that you're talking to someone about you and you're taking the time to talk about you and what's bothering you is is it's very therapeutic you know even if it's not something major even if you're just like oh, I'm just stressed about work and there's this and that and I wish I could do this and that to have that ear and someone else listening to you even though you're paying them is very therapeutic um, because you're getting it off your chest and when you talk about it I found it kinda uses different parts of your brain to help you kind of think about it in a different way or potentially come up with a solution to it to power through it but the thing is you can't get those solutions unless you talk about it, unless you come forward about it. So yeah, we're both here. Now, in, in regards to the, you know, the depression and the suicide and everything, if you ever are feeling uh, suicidal, call a fucking ambulance, dude. Uh, call the hotline. Go to the ER. They'll dope you up, give you some therapist for a week, and you'll, you'll come out fine. I think the issue is there's just this huge stigma now. Like it used to be in the 40s and 50s. Fucking people would go check in at a mental hospital for a week if they had to. And it wasn't really a crazy deal. You know, like it was like, <laughs> yeah, he did it. He, he had to. But now it's like, oh, so-and-so checked into a crazy hospital. What's wrong with him? I hope he doesn't shoot up a fucking school. You know, like it's just, yep. you know, it, it, there's a stigma attached to it. But it shouldn't be because um, it, it's something that affects a majority of people. And, and you know, we could sit here all day and talk about what we think the reasons for that are. But I think the fact is we live in a society that, that at least I do, I don't know how it is in Canada, but in America, in American society, we live in, in they, we, we, they don't teach you how to take care of yourself mentally. They don't teach you how to be a happy human being. Um, we live in a, a, a consumerist type thing where you need the next best thing so that you're this cool and that awesome. And, and you know, we, we don't put value on, on loving yourself for who you truly are. Um, and so uh, hopefully, you know, especially with all the shootings that have been happening, hopefully we're moving slowly towards a new era when it comes to mental illness and understanding that. Um, but drugs are just a band-aid, you know, they're just a band-aid. And the only way you're ever going to fix it is to take action, vocalize what you're going through, um, and, and take some time for yourself. And as an internet marketer, you're in a great position to do that. Even if you, you know, even if you're just going crazy and you want to go spend a week in Hawaii, go do it, man. Um, t do whatever you got to do to be happy because when you do, you'll come out of it, uh, more fired up, more amped and more ready to, to better serve your customers and yourself. 
Um, I, I, that was, there was a guy that I knew, very, very powerful guy back in the day, um, had brought himself up from the dregs. He had stopped using his drugs. He was, he was into it because he was like, I guess this is enjoying life for me. It's really fun. And he was like, at one point in his life, he goes, okay, so I'm just going to go to Mexico this week. I figure if I'm going to do some stupid shit with my money, I may as well at least get a good enjoyable experience out of it. So he started going like that. And he said he found himself feeling a lot better spending his money on that than he did spending his money on a night out or a party because he thinks that that's going to get away from it. So you just you said something. It's, it's funny. If you want to do some crazy shit, do some crazy shit that's going to move you in towards the, the direction you want to go. Um, so I think that was a good point that you made. Now, on top of that, I also want to apologize for the amount of times that Stephen and I have used the word crazy during this conversation. Oh, yeah. I didn't mean like you're crazy, <laughs> crazy. I just meant like, oh, that's a crazy thing. No, I know, but I think we both said it. Like the crazy yeah, part that's, is. Yeah, no, see, yeah, that's the thing is like it's such a stigma. Like you're like, oh, now you're calling a, a mentally ill person crazy. <laughs> I, sent, I sent that. I sent this is insane in a subject line one time and someone said to me, don't ever use that word again. Like they sent me the email uh -huh. about that saying don't send that because like my mother-in-law is actually certifiably insane and that really hit home for me. I'm like, yeah. come on. Are you kidding? Yeah, I mean... It, that's the it's thing. not disrespect when we say it. It's just right. Well, yeah, I think I think context is is what matters. And and see, like that's the thing is mental illness is a very serious thing. The fact that that person was upset, it, it is a very serious thing. But it's something that our country doesn't take seriously. You know, if you've ever struggled with any type of mental illness, it's not fun. It's dangerous. You know, a study just came out like last week that said depression isn't only a mental illness, it's a physical illness as well because it, it, it affects your entire organism. Like you're, literally your biological processes are hampered and slowed down and are hurt when you're depressed. So like it's a legit thing and it's not fun, it's not pleasant, it's not something we should joke about. But because of that, like we don't – like we on the flip side we don't take it seriously as a country there aren't programs in place for people there aren't you know if, if you go and tell your you know your people you drink with once a week that you're feeling down or upset and you guys aren't of a particular like level friendship wise they're going to think you're weird you know like it's it's just it's not it, for some reason there's this, the country is just not accepting of that and i i'm hoping that soon we will be because you know some a lot of mental illnesses aren't permanent. I mean, some are, but some you can work through. Um, but you have to have that shoulder. You have to have the encouragement from your family and friends to do so. I never, I never would have stopped the amount of drugs I was using if my family didn't, you know, come out from from a place of love and try to help me through that. And that's my family. You know, how many people? don't maybe have a close family like that or don't have close friends and i'm always i'm always aware or try to be aware of what people are feeling so that i can you know maybe help them if i need to it's it's just it's i know i'm kind of rambling but i just i just seeing the state of the country uh at least our country uh, america um in the way we treat mental illness it upsets me man because it's just it's it's a serious thing and and it there's nothing in, there's not a lot in place for people. I don't know, man. It's it's it, I guess my point is it's just not something you have to do alone. Did I lose you? No, I just had my my thing muted cuz um the landscapers that tend to show up every Friday are here again. Um I think it's a uh I think it's an important thing, and I know that when we were talking about potentially, you know, this being something that w that we could talk about, it wasn't necessarily going to be the most sexy topic, um, or or one that people are necessarily going to like line up to hear. But I'm hoping that just by having this on, it's going to open that dialogue and let some people know. Because I mean, there's one or two people on here that listen to this that that may look up to us a bit for for what we've managed to achieve, and I th I think we've done our part to bring some awareness to it and let a few people know at least that that it's okay like it happens and it it doesn't have to be you don't have to be alone going through it you definitely have to make the choice to get out of it because you do that's that's just like that's going to be there on you when enough is enough you'll do it and enough make enough enough now 
<laughs> like get out and, and, and actually take an active approach because who knows, who knows what your activity may lead to for other people down the road. I mean, God knows, I remember, I, I, I was a homeless kid one time, and I remember looking up going, I got like two weeks to live if I don't smarten up, and now because I finally did smarten up, I, got the cho- I have the opportunity where I've affected other people who now have full-time income from, incomes from home because I was willing to say that enough was enough for me. So the, the, what you have to contribute to the world as a human being is amazing, and I hope that this conversation that we've had has allowed a few people to realize just that fact. And even though you may not feel like it today, the second you take that step to move forward is the second that you're going to start, you're going to start seeing the impact you can have on the world. And I, I know that sometimes uh, one of the biggest things, the biggest needs, I forget who the guy's like, he's really like a big like psychiatry guy and he's got this list of stuff but one of the biggest things that we have when we're in that place is we don't feel that we have a sense of contribution we may not know that we want it but one of our deep down needs is to feel as though we're contributing to the world around us and when we get in that place we don't necessarily feel like we can but once we start stepping out of it we begin to feel as though we're going to be able to do that and it kind of gives purpose to a place that almost feels purposeless um, often that makes sense. Well said, man. Well, if you guys ever need to reach out to either of us, we are both available. Otherwise, I think this has been a great call. Thanks for tuning in to the Marketing Hour. Um, as always, if you have anything you'd like us to talk about, comment, send us a message. We'll be happy to do an episode on it um, and, and just kind of explore things. Uh, hope to see some of you guys at Mayhem. I'll be there. I don't know if Bill will be there. Otherwise, look out for our next episode, and thanks for listening. Later, guys.